sixth tournament between the yeah. basketball game between the Bulldogs of Plainsburg Kimmel High School and the Wolves of West Shemokin High School. West Shemokin and the PIAA are committed to promoting good sportsmanship and positive interscholastic interactions. Please remember that sportsmanship is pride in your school, your community, your team, and yourself. Sportsmanship shows respect for the sport as well as for the players, coaches, officials, and fans. Please take a personal responsibility to demonstrate your sportsmanship qualities at tonight's event. Enjoy your evening and thanks for choosing to be part of our greatest sports of entertainment, high school, high school athletics. athletics. And now, now would everyone please, please stand. stand. Gentlemen, kindly remove your hats. For the team, our national anthem. Here to sing our national anthem tonight are the members of the West Shemokin Drama Club. This year's musical, Fiddler on the Roof, this weekend, which features our own Travis John and the rest of the West American Drama Club. The kids have been working tirelessly and are very excited for their performances. Please come support our West American students in the musical. Show times for this evening are Friday at 7 p.m., Saturday at 7 p.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. Thank you. And good evening and welcome to West Shemokin Junior Senior High School for tonight's presentation of District 6 Playoff Basketball here on High Top Sports Network. My name is Joe Rhodes. Joining me tonight, my main man, Josh Reckengast here on the ones and twos. Uh, thank you for being with us here tonight. Uh, glad to be here. It's certainly a uh, playoff atmosphere here at West Shemokin Junior Senior High School. And Josh, uh, it's a great day for basketball. Uh, every day is a great day for basketball, Joe. You know this. Indeed. And we're about to get the starting lineups. First for the Claysburg Kimmel Bulldogs. I wore their colors today and unintentionally. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So uh, Judd gave me a look. Head coach Judd McCullough gave me a look. Like, What you doing? What are you doing here, pal? No, I'm just finishing this up here, Josh. I'll be right with you. And thanks to the John F. Graff Insurance Agency, our gold sponsor tonight, official broadcast partner. Thanks to John. I reached out to him, and he was... More than happy to jump on board. He's a tremendous, not only a supporter of ours, but supporter of high school athletics in Armstrong County and beyond. So thanks to the John F. Graff Insurance Agency for being tonight's official broadcast partner and tonight's starting lineup sponsor, Ryan Bowser State Farm, like a good neighbor. Ryan Bowser State Farm is there. Got to see Ryan last week, have a little chat with him. He provided us with some good information. So thanks to Ryan as always. Indeed, as the West Shemokin starter is being announced. Just want to mention Travis Johns uh, was one of the members of the drama club out there singing the national anthem. Silky smooth, baritone voice carrying the load out there for the drama club during the national anthem. Tremendous rendition of the Star Spangled Banner by the West Shemokin Drama Club. Their musical is coming up this weekend. Fiddler on the Roof. Don't know if you're familiar with that one. I'm really not. I'm not either. Uh, I figured you would be. Uh, I, I've heard of it. <laughs> I know it's pretty famous.
And thank you for being with us here. Consolation basketball game for third and fourth place, respectively, in the Class 2A bracket of District 6. That'll determine some matchups here as the PIAA playoffs start here next week. Josh, uh, again, I love playoff basketball. Get a chance to do it with you, too. That's uh, kind of a rarity for us. I know. Get the scoreboard fixed there. It's a... Uh, well, tonight's opening tip-off sponsor, Schulteis Roofing Incorporated, thanks to the Schulteis Roofing Incorporated, the leader in commercial roofing in the Western Pennsylvania region. Wolves will begin with the basketball. Alex Talmadge, point guard, really came on as the season came on, Josh. A nice uh, addition to the scoring that is provided by that young man. Just passing the ball. He's going to put the shot back rim no good. Braden Rogers, the name I was going to say there. Ball will stay with the Wolves. Just underway here in this District 6 Class 2A consolation game. Ball inbounded. Volume up. Okay. Uh, too loud, just yell at me. Here's Rogers, corner shot up, back rim no good. Hustle under the hoop for it. Olinger battling two guys to keep it here with West Shemokin, so Wolves will remain in possession of the basketball. Travis Johns and that Again, silky baritone voice. Another three, the third shot of the game, and this one's good. All three coming from behind the arc, and that one finding the twine. Three to nothing, West Shemokin. Well, Talmadge had a rough shooting night at Northern Cambria. Pretty much everybody did, honestly. Um, only 30 points scored by the Wolves, and it's nice to see Talmadge get that triple on the board early here for West Shemokin. Indeed, a welcome sight if you can get him going early, Josh. Now the Bulldogs with their first offensive possession of the game. Coming off a loss to the uh, high-powered offense of West Branch. Oh, man. Playing Northern Cambria here tonight in the championship game at Mount Aloysius. Yeah, that'll be an interesting matchup. A really good defensive team in the Colts and a high-powered, as you said, offense in the Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors able to get four players in double digits in scoring in that last game against these Bulldogs. Their fouled on the shot. Josh was number 22, Elias Ritchie. He was in double figures in that loss to the Warriors. Got that first free throw up and good. You want to call play by play? No, I was oh. just, <laughs> you were looking down at the screen. One more upcoming for Richie. Back rim no good. Corralled in by Ollinger. Given off to Talmadge and the Wolves will Look to add on to their three to one lead. 6.34 left in quarter number one. Up, no good. My man with the headband and the lettuce there lets that one go. Smart move by number 52, Aiden Simpson. I'll tell you what, Simpson is rocking uh, what can only be described as a, a distinct hairstyle there. Yeah, beautiful look. It's kind of a hockey player look, really. He has the basketball, high post, little crossover move there, trying to get in, kicks it out. In the lane, another kick out, and good defense there by the Wolves, collapsing, playing good help defense. Ollinger pokes that one away momentarily. And defense on point right now for West Shemokin. Up with the shot, and good. Tying the game up there was Richie. He has all three of points and there's a steal of kind of a lazy pass from Talmadge back to Johns and just like that the Bulldogs up by two and another turnover last basket was made by this young man hardly have a chance to even catch up Braden Haney who will go to the line now and shoot two so a big swing here now for the Bulldogs who lead by two and looking to make it more here Josh boy I'll tell you for as well as West Shemokin handled Northern Cambria's press um, they, that did not look good, those two passes out of there by Johns uh, on the inbound. Uh, lazy. Well, that's all you can really describe them as. They were little lobs, really. First shot by Haney Good. One more upcoming. Wolves inbound the basketball. Talmadge with it, trapped in the corner, gets it to the middle, or Rogers is able to get it ahead, up with it, and no good. Was Olinger, but a rebound by... Jude Olinger, it's good. 
Seven to five now the score. Well, Jude is definitely an Olinger the way he gets in there and scraps oh for the ball. Oh my goodness. Not as beefy as Ezek, but you know. That, yeah, the, that high motor we always would talk about with Ezek, evident with the uh, younger of the Olingers. Nice shot fake there, comes in. That one ripped away by who else? But Ooh. Jude Olinger. Love that hustle. A good sportsmanship there by Olinger. Picked up the headband there of Aiden Simpson, gave it back. Love that uh, the style that Olinger plays with. It's every possession is his last. And that uh, foul is going to go against the young man he was tangled up with, Aiden Simpson, as the rap horn sounds. Yeah, where did that come from? Trapped in the corner and a foul called. Talman's lucky for that. Picked up his dribble and nearly turning it over, but the reach in is going to be called. Early score here, 454 left first quarter. Claysburg Kimmel with a 7 to 5 lead. Wolves inbounding. Wolves took a three to nothing lead. And Claysburg Kimmel really storming back since. There's a pass by John, stolen. Could have been over and back actually, just where he caught the ball, but Travis Johns now with the basketball. Talmadge thinking about shooting it, gets it back to Johns. He has a shot fake, dishes it off to Talmadge, thinks about shooting it, but the Bulls will reset instead. 4.31 left, Johns pops it up and good. Travis Johns and Josh, you had a chance to talk to Judd McCullough about Travis Johns. I guess they kind of thought that he'd come on sooner with that three-point shot, but coming in, uh, coming on at the right time here in the playoffs. Well, he really got an opportunity uh, against Northern Cambria when Braden Rogers went out with that sprained ankle. Rogers looks pretty good out there. Judd, uh, head coach McCullough thought he would be at 95% in this game. Dangerous pass there, and the Wolves take advantage as Olinger is bumped and fouled by number 42. Corey Walter, the sophomore. But yeah, to finish the point, uh, Coach McCullough did say that they expected Johns to, you know, be a little bit more accurate uh, earlier in the season and throughout, but he started to come on lately, hit a couple of big ones in that game against the Colts. Uh, they actually took a lead on one, I think, by a point, but Northern Cambria just too strong in that game. Late in the game, ended up winning by eight. Wolves with the basketball, one point lead after the three by Johns. Talmadge is gonna have a chance now. That's good. The Wolves making it rain from deep. Talmadge now with six points. 11 to seven the score. My sound going in and out. And a turnover again, coming away with it is Ezra Osterling tipped away, battle for it, loose still, and away with it now is Claysburg. Kimmel pushing the basketball. Haney fouled from behind. I think that's going to go, Josh, against the Wolves, number 34. That's uh, Easton Barrett. And a media timeout for folks hey, that's like us. us, Josh. So, uh, yeah, sure, a message of one of our sponsors, if you would. Sure thing. Uh, B&E Powder Solutions, one of our premier sponsors for this game, Jason Elkin a good friend of the network, the leader in spray foam insulation, and uh, we're going to be utilizing Jason's services here, hopefully very, very soon, on the new High Top Sports Network headquarters. HQ. Uh, High Top Homecoming? Yeah. You're all uh, welcome. Uh, not Homecoming, ho housewarming, that's uh, what it is. It could be, well, it could be a Homecoming, yeah, Whatever too. we want it to be. Gosh darn it, but no. yeah. Thanks to B&E Powder Solutions and Jason Elkin. Uh, for sponsoring, uh, you know, come playoff time, you just give Jason, shoot him a text, give him a call, and he's always all in, a great supporter of what we do and of high school athletics in this area in the Heritage Conference. So 11-7 to 7 here, Josh, early on, and uh, what are your early uh, observations of this uh, of this one? Hand down, man down. I mean, Claysburg Kimmel has to get out on West Shimoka, and they have to have seen some film on the Wolves, and they, they got to know the Wolves like to put it up from deep. They've been doing that. I mean, Talmadge was only about a step and a half back from the top of the key there when he hit that last three-pointer. I mean, that's makeable in high school nowadays. They, they got to get out and challenge those threes. John's hit that one on the wing, so uh, Claysburg Kimmel got to contest that long ball a little bit better, Joe. So 3.15 remaining in this first quarter. Fouls starting to add it for both teams, three apiece. Little pit bull on the... Yeah, as uh, I don't think I think it kind of goes without saying, I'm a big fan. <laughs> you know, the white suits, the sunglasses indoors, the bald head, nice cars. I, that could go on, but uh, track house racing. Nobody else wants to hear track house racing. Uh, 
Nobody wants to hear about that, or do they? I think they do. I mean, the more you know about Pitbull, the better. Their flash, the more you know, uh, Rainbow, <laughs> or Shooting Star, rather. That one's tipped, and he's going to go out of bounds. Uh, beside himself there uh, for a second was Haney. Well, the Wolves might have got a call there, but oh, John's the no-look baseball pass. Ooh, Osterling, or excuse me, uh, Ezra Osterling with a carry, but a travel instead going to go against Talmadge. Maybe a little bit of a makeup call there. But a uh, good call nonetheless there by the gentleman in stripes. Ball back over to the Bulldogs. And uh, Josh, I think it's uh, not a, I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to say that the Wolves have shot more shots from behind the arc thus far than they have inside. Definitely. Uh, not afraid to pull it is West Shemokin. Got guys like Johns and Talmadge and, of course, Rogers. As that one goes clanking off the backboard hard, getting an offensive board up with it. No good. It was uh, 42 at Corey Walters. And the Wolves with the basketball. 2.24 left first quarter, up by four. Saw Ezra Osterling sky for that rebound right there. Those volleyball hops getting up and grabbing it. Zone defense now by the Bulldogs. A little 3-2 protect against that shooting that the Wolves present. A little reverse. Again, Osterling, such great uh, leaping ability, even if it's kind of horizontally. Getting uh, from that other side block to uh, the hoop quite easily, but that one uh, out of bounds by the Bulldogs. But uh, to finish my point there, Josh, uh, Osterling able to really sky. And he doesn't necessarily look long when, you, when you're you know, standing next to him or even when you're watching him play volleyball, when you watch him play basketball, it really seems much longer than, uh, he, than he kind of originally appears as Talmadge in the corner, trying to get rid of it. Grab, but he gets it ahead. Everything kind of stopped there, it seemed. Rogers goes up with a little scoop shot. Good. Braden Rogers with a nice little scoop a dupe there. That's right, scoop a dupe. I like that. Not to be confused with Snoop a loop. Snoop a loop. I'll bring, tell you, was, bring your green hat. Was Osterling trying to dunk that ball? I mean, he like threw it like he was trying to dunk it. I don't know. He could certainly get up. I wouldn't be surprised if he can. This last shot off the back rim by the Bulldogs. Quickly down the court for the Wolves. Good extra pass there. Another extra pass, but maybe one too many as it yeah. is out of bounds from Osterling to Olinger. The O brothers. <coughs> oh, brother. Are those banners always hanging up there? I don't think so. Um, to our right. Yeah, that definitely. That's a new uh, feature. Looks different. Turnover again, and the Wolves were guilty of turnovers early on, but now it's the Bulldogs that are giving away the basketball and a foul there against Jude Olinger. It'll be the fourth foul against the Wolves, 54 seconds left here in the first quarter. Again, fouls adding up quickly. Osterling will head back to the table and check in here. Yeah, second there on Jude Olinger, so he's going to come out and sit down for a bit. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's like unconscious when he plays. He's just kind of looking forward. It's like he hears nothing. There's uh, Jude Olinger, but he loves his style. He's, I hear nothing. He's, he's just all hustle. Shot up by Haney. Back rim, no good. Again, skying for the board was Oster, uh, Osterling. I was doing what you were doing last game. You get to, no, I was getting it mixed up. You, you know, I, we watched these kids for years. We know their families, and uh, still, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the worst part. We know their families. Know, know them for years, and uh, still, nonetheless, it, uh, you're second guessing yourself, and you're saying Olinger and Osterling. I was like Ezra Olinger. <laughs> was, no, that's not right. <laughs> so the Wolves are going to hold for the last shot. 22 seconds left, leading by five. Wolves began with a is it a three point lead or five point lead. I believe it was three. Three, and then uh, from there, the Bulldogs went on a run, but the Wolves finishing off this quarter with a run. It's gonna be capped off with a three by Alex Talmadge. One last chance, but that one blocked away by Talmadge. They're gonna call foul. Wow. Talmadge is beside himself. I mean, he, he was pumped after the uh, initial play. He thought he got a clean block there, but gonna get some untimed free throws here for the Bulldogs. Tough break for West Shemokin, who Thought they were going to head into the break between quarters with a nine-point lead, and they still might as the first shot is off. But uh, look clean from our angle, Josh, but the refs say differently.
Oh, BDL, as Alex Talmud is pumped up that those didn't go down. Yeah, great philosopher Greg Hutcherson would say, ball don't lie. Uh, pocket square game, immaculate. Immaculate indeed, and after the first quarter, the score you could say is immaculate in favor of the Wolves. They would say it is, 16 to seven against the Claysburg Kimmel Bulldogs in the District 6 Class 2A consolation game. And if we get any updates on the championship game between Northern Cambria and West Branch, we will make sure to pass that along. But in the meantime, we're gonna take a quick break here. And we'll be right back for second quarter action on High Top Sports. Back, second quarter action. Bulldogs beginning with the basketball here. Josh and I are talking a little golf between quarters. As you saw, uh, our second favorite place on earth. Yeah, our favorite would be every gym yeah. that, we, that we're in. But uh, that, of course, Birdsfoot Golf Club. Josh, I was there today. You got was, to see some history. Yep. Yeah. One Colt Sprinkle with a hole in one. Unbelievable. Yep. You can hear in my voice that I'm super happy for him. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, <laughs> both of us, uh, Many, many years older than Mr. Yeah. Sprankle. And, uh, we have, have yet to accomplish that feat, so a little, little bitter. Oh, man. Up, and ref looked like he was about to call a foul. Yeah, so he brought he his hand back in, and, you know, you start getting into traffic like that, sometimes you got to definitely hold your whistle. And ref deciding to do so there. The Wolves now with the basketball. A minute into the second quarter, a nine-point advantage. But, yeah, it was 30 degrees, Josh. I was at Bird's Foot. And uh, people are like, you're nuts, that's cold. I'm thinking, no, it's golf. I love it. That's golf weather. And Braden Rogers knocking down the three. Nice looking stroke there by Braden. Wolves now up by 12. Well, good to see BR out here playing in this game. I mean, that ankle, he went down hard and he was in some real pain at Northern Cambria and had to be helped off. Ezra Osterling basically picked him up and took him out <laughs> to the gym. And trainer Jen Blystone uh, got to work, taped that ankle up real high. When he came out, the tape was above his socks, so I knew he was in some severe pain. So 19 to seven, your score here on High Top Sports Network. Thanks to our official broadcast partner. John F. Graff Insurance yep. Agency. Appreciate you, John. Talmadge gets the high post, nice pass by Barrett. Out to the corner where, uh, excuse me, Braden Rogers able to knock it down. An excellent passing there by the Wolves. And Coach Harris will call a timeout and reassess things. And the Wolves now up by 15, Josh. And, you know, when things are going good from three, West Shemokin can be a really scary team. We know that they're not afraid to pull it. Sometimes you can live by the three and die by the three. But tonight the Wolves certainly living by it as they lead by 15. Yeah, Braden Rogers, a couple, couple three balls here, and as I said, when when you asked me my thoughts, uh, Claysburg has to, you know, stretch that defense a little bit and get out and contest those because the Wolves are not uh, gun shy <laughs> from downtown. But I want to thank another one of our sponsors. We'll have an opportunity and a guy that uh, super supportive of us, uh, super supportive of West Shemokin Athletics. Um, and that Carson Boyer funeral home and Brian Myers certainly appreciate his uh, his uh, help. Uh, many, many other ways to describe it, but uh, certainly believes in uh, what we do, and we're proud of that and uh, appreciate his support of not just us, but West Shemokin Athletics and really athletics all throughout the county here in Armstrong County. So thank you to Carson Boyer funeral home and monuments. Josh, still going to get you that monument? Not, yeah, not a um, stone. I don't want people out there thinking I'm going to give you like a grave, <laughs> a gravestone. That's not what we're doing here. That's a. That's not even a subliminal message right there. That's no, I'm going to get you. A, I'm going to get you something because you can give them out as gifts. Let me make that very clear. 
These, uh, these can be sort of a dedicational type monuments, not just things uh, associated with death. Ooh. Nice shot there by Haney, a much needed bucket for the Bulldogs. Now down by 12. Bulldogs faced a running clock in the game against West Branch and really had a nice spurt coming out of the locker room in the third quarter against West Branch, but that running clock, as Coach Harris has told the Bedford Gazette, uh, kind of uh, put their backs up even further against the wall. It's hard to make a comeback when the clock's against you in the first place, but certainly when it's running, it's more against you. Yeah, I've often wondered, has anyone come back when that clock started running on them in basketball? I feel like it'd be a lot harder in football once the clock starts running. In basketball, I could see a team get hot and just start firing. And yeah, that's a great question, actually. How many teams? I'm sure somebody's done it. Uh, I don't know if the policy is in other states, but you would think that at some point in time, uh, somebody got lucky and was able to. Or at least force overtime or something. I don't know. You know, it's interesting. Because say they were down 28 they, they, points. Their star player got hurt. They fell behind. That player yeah. comes back. Because usually, I mean, you're be hard, making it look easy there on the near side block. A little fadeaway. Wolves up by 16 now. 26 to 10. Five minutes left second quarter. Stay tuned. At halftime is a chuck a duck will happen. Yeah, that's right. Josh is going to participate. Uh, not. They don't. They, I asked if I could chuck the duck from here. I was given a stern no. Why yeah. would they say no? I mean, it'd be even more impressive if you were able to do so. It's Talmadge wide open lane and missing. Oh, man. Sometimes the easiest ones are the hardest. How about Ezra's doing? I know. <laughs> a maniac in there. And, and, you know, that's the thing. I think why I get he and uh, Mr. Olinger confused is BR knocking down another three. And another timeout by Claysburg Kimmel. Yeah, it's getting out of hand. Josh wearing the garb of the Bulldogs tonight to show his support. Yeah, you know, I my shirt looks exactly <laughs> like the assistant No, it is coaches. exactly the same shirt. The, the only thing that's different is yeah. we have High Top Sports Network here. Yeah, and I, I wondered if the people from Claysburg Kimmel were looking at you and being like, who, who is, is that? This guy? I've never seen him before. Where's he been all season? <laughs> <laughs> the exact same shirt. I, yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. Josh is going to hopefully talk to Coach here at, uh, and you'll see that, and, and you'll see at the halftime after Coach comes out of the locker room, you'll see that Josh is literally like, pay attention right now. Is, is yeah, look at that him. assistant coach right there in and front the there, coach, and the head coach, of course, too, uh, wearing the exact same shirt as yeah, I have. You'll on. see at halftime. Stick around for that. It's Not to hear what Judd has to say, but it's that just <laughs> Josh's Josh's uh, impeccable uh, style of matching the. Uh, Oh, man. Team. It's worse than when we did that double header at Red Bank and the assistant coach or the head coach got on you about wearing the opposing team's colors. Yeah, that happens. So I, I, I pick my – it's funny now. I, I definitely pick the colors that I wear very carefully. <laughs> I did I, not. I try to wear something that neither team is. Like tonight I'm wearing green and yellow. <laughs> um, you know, no green in any of these uh, colors. Yellow a little bit on the trim of the uh, Bulldogs. But, you know, Josh says, hey. I'm going to wear the blue. Hey, I'm going to look at some photos, see I'm if I have anything that looks exactly <laughs> like what their coaches wear. Oh, I do? Oh, unreal. Great. I'll wear that. 29 to 10, your score. 426 left, second quarter. Good ball movement there by the Bulldogs, who give it away once again. And quick passing by the West Shemokin transition game. Yields a basket by Rogers, who's on fire right now. He's up to 15 points. And he sure has a. Uh, been filling it up here over the last, what, five or so minutes, Josh? I was going to say, I think all of them are in the second quarter. I don't know if he scored in the first. So 31 to 10, Wolves on a quite a pace here offensively. That foul's going to go against Johns. That's his second. Well, you pointed it out earlier, the ball movement at West Shemokin is just really passing through the openings right now and he's setting up those shooters for open looks. Yeah, especially when it's against the press or on fast breaks. You know, Coach Woodrow and my, my head coach in high school is a ball just kind of sitting there and Haney advantageous and scooping it up. But he would always say, you know, a good fast breaker, a good uh, press breaker, shouldn't t ball shouldn't touch the floor. Haney wow. from deep, nearly. Uh, Yatesboro. Yeah. <laughs> that one was definitely somewhere near uh, Dayton. <laughs> Belknap. That's right. Snyderville. A little pull up there. No good by Rogers. It's like the home run derby. Chris Berman. Yeah. Did, did you think he did research before those games? Like, hey, I'm going to try to remember as many small towns that surround this city as I possibly can. No, he had some grunt intern do it for him. That's probably true. Is a Haney trying to throw a 
90 mile per hour fastball down to the block that's somehow intercepted by Alex Talmadge. Three minutes remaining here. Scores mirrored, 31 to 13. A nice shot by Ezra Osterling on the baseline. That's up and good. Good shooting percentage, I'd say, here, Josh, for the Wolves. They started out just one for three, putting up nothing but threes there in the first uh, possession of the game, but really have uh, been quite efficient here. Oh, they found it, that's for sure. So a 20-point advantage. This is much like the uh, game against West Branch for the Bulldogs. That shot's up and good. Nice little shot from the elbow. A little mid-range game there. Yeah, by Elias Ritchie. Daring Osterling to shoot in the corner. He doesn't. Ritchie up to five points now on the offensive end. Bulldogs started the game in a man, went to zone and back to man now. Rogers nearly a double dribble there. Thought he might have put two hands on the ball. Gets his own board, puts it back up. Might have been better off bringing that one yeah, down. Yeah, I was but just thinking the same thing. But instead, uh, decides against that. Whoops, got to update the score here. Got to get it together. That shot no good. Quick possession there by the Bulldogs. But uh, I was mentioning a moment ago that this game mirroring the game against the Warriors for the Bulldogs. Had a really, really tough first half. Fell behind and found something in the second half and kind of found their legs. And certainly something I think that they didn't want to have to repeat. Falling behind early is not an easy task to have to come back from. Well, especially when it's by a large margin. You know, it, it, you're down by six, and you have to come back from a lot easier than 20 or 18. Josh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry said, about God that. bless you. God bless you nonetheless. Thanks. Um, but uh, anything you want to say? You want to share any messages about our uh, terrific sponsors? Yeah, of course. Schulteis Roofing Incorporated, thanks to Jenny. She was on vacay, and I told her, Oh, Your out-of-office message said you were coming back in 2022. <laughs> I said, Joe, and I thought you mastered time travel. And she thought that was pretty <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty great. But Jenny's a great supporter of West Shemokin. and obviously uh, her kids went here, and she's uh, still very much involved in supporting our coverage uh, of the athletic programs and also Schultes Roofing Incorporated, uh, you know, a game sponsor throughout the year for uh, the school and the teams here as well. So thanks to Schulteis Roofing Incorporated. Check out their website, and uh, you'll see what they are capable of. Just as I said, the leader in commercial roofing in the western Pennsylvania region. They do pretty much everything. Yeah, commercial sloped roofs. Uh, roofs? Roofs? Roofs. Yeah, it's western PA. I'm going to say roofs. Yeah, but, I guess uh, say roof. When it comes to roofs, nobody does it like Schulteis. <laughs> and uh, the ability really to do it uh, throughout the region, as you said, uh, the leader in commercial roofing. And so... Uh, if you have any big projects coming up your business, uh, make sure you check out uh, the leader, Schulteis Roofing. Some of the photos on the website, I mean, they had to have massive, a, a massive. drone go way up to get these buildings in. They're so big. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid of heights, and oh. so I don't know how I'd be able to actually do anything constructive uh, at a height like that. You're 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 a desk guy for a construction company. You know? yep. We're not climbing ladders. Nope, nope, I'm the desk guy. I'm Will Farrell. Uh, from uh, the other guys. Yeah. You're humming while you're typing? Yep. <laughs> Little river band. <laughs> Jump ball. <laughs> 119 left. Uh, speaking of heights, we're going to be high up here in a, yeah, you will. about 12 hours. Taking a flight. I'm terrified. Jet plane. Yep. So if this is my last broadcast ever. Oh, boy. It's been real. You're really statistically as safe as you could possibly be traveling that. I have really liked doing this. It's been fun. Remember me fondly. I'll get you a monument. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Make sure it's from Carson Boyer. Oh, it will be. Please. Shot it by Haney. No good. Wow, what a nice board there. Rogers in position to get it over, uh, over the back, but leaping so high that he basically uh, avoided any contact of the, the uh, player boxing him out. Jumping out of the foul call. <laughs> Indeed. 33-15 the score, and the whistle Ooh. blows. Foul going to be called, and going to the hoop was Talmadge. See some of my family members over there in the bleachers. Cousin Rachel. Oh, I love Rachel. Yeah, she... Uh, Shared she, a beverage or two together? Yeah, she texted me today and said, are you guys doing the game? And I said, yes, we are. She said, I'll see you there. We stumbled into an establishment in the south side, or not south side, north shore. <laughs> One of them. Pir <laughs> Pirates rain delay, and yeah. there she was. 
a welcome sight. A friendly face in a sea of strangers. Exactly. And I look strange. <laughs> a lot of photos taken that night. Yeah, I set a record for most selfies taken at PNC Park. I'd love to I'd, Yeah, nobody else could even come close to that. Yeah, I took a, took a better part of 150, I think. It's just random strangers just went up to him and said, will you take a selfie with me? I got some really uh, negative responses, but I got some really nice ones. Too. I was going to say, it's a great project, you know, a photo type project. Uh, you'd string those all together in like a mosaic. It'd be pretty cool looking. Maybe I'll do that. So folks can in see. It's at the time. end of it. If you go to our meet, your high topper uh, segments we made, look them up on YouTube. One on Josh, one on myself. At the very end, a little montage of all the photos I took that night. We're Did still you? looking for somebody out of those, those yeah, photos. Yeah, long story. Foul up in good shooter's roll there for the Bulldogs. More specifically, number 33. No, that's not Scotty Pippen. That's Anthony Napolit uh, Napolitano. Napolitano, yeah. That's a great name. That means he's from Napoli. It does it. I thought it meant he was from Venice. <laughs> so both of his free throws up and good. Nice job there by the senior forward. Neither of these teams is going to say he's a senior, but uh, he still will have at least a, a game to go in his career. Both of these teams qualifying for the PIAA tournament. Alex Talmadge knocking down the three. How about, oh, sorry, Joe. Didn't mean to step on you there. No, you're good. How about the double screen they set for Talmadge right there? And he was completely free when he got the ball at the top of the key. That was a great play call. Osterling from midcourt. Oh, no Ooh. good. Just left of the square, and that's how things will end here in this District 6 Class 2A Constellation game. A battle for third here at West Shemokin Junior Senior High School. Josh. How about it, Joe? 22 points in that quarter for the Wolves, outscoring the Bulldogs 22 to 11 in the second quarter, opening up that 21-point lead. Just a tremendous shooting display as we're about to see some ducks get chucked. Yeah, I. Uh, this is one of my favorite things ever. Oh, yeah. Love Chuck a Duck. Whoever thought it, I'd like to know who came up with this idea. Like, imagine there's like a booster meeting, and they're like, you know what we're going to do, we should do? We're going to charge should, people. We're going to charge people to take ducks, get very competitive about it, throw them in the middle of the court, and it's going to go way better than 50-50. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. At, and, and sure enough, they were right. At Northern Cambria, I tried to explain it to uh, <laughs> the venerable Brandon Treckengoss, who did that game with me, and he uh, didn't really get it. He was like, what do you mean they, they chuck a duck? I was like, they throw it. They throw it? I go, and it has to land close to a part of the logo. They, I mean, like at Armstrong Games, it's the eye of the Riverhawk logo that you got to um, hit. Wait, so what's the target here? I think. Is it, it the nose? I'm not sure. It might be the eyes also. The eyes are creepy, by the way. They're red. Yeah, they have to. I know. The, uh, what's the, up with that? The demon wolf here. And, and the wolf on the... The wall has normal yellowish eyes like a, a wolf would have. Yeah. Now, that one out on the court, they are red. That wolf scares me. I scared of that wolf. Brian Fellows, Safari Planet. What's up with that wolf? <laughs> His eyes are scary. No, you may not have my credit card information. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Josh, uh, the wolves able to fill it up there in that quarter, led by the efforts of Alex Talmadge and Braden Rogers. Talmadge with 15 points. And Rogers right behind him with 14, chipping in with four there. On the bottom is number one in your heart, number one in the program, literally. Chuck, some ducks. See, Ezra Osterling. Even Dan Spencer, the athletic director. Oh, that wasn't Dan, sorry. It was someone else uh, for the boosters there. Make sure that's all tested out. Uh, what do you, oh, the microphone? Yep. Uh, I was going to use the one with the most juice in it. Less juice. Yep. Well, I'm going to let this guy take it away. You enjoy the duck chug. Uh, yes. We're going to take a quick break. Good? Uh, I think so. Before we chuck the ducks, I want to say thanks to everybody who supports the boys. Uh, the boosters ask me to say thank you for buying the ducks, for buying the 50 50. That's a real hero, whoever provided the ducks. I know. They don't I, all wear scar uh, scarves. <laughs> they don't all wear capes. <laughs> Maybe not, he's that bad. Not all heroes wear scarves. It's going to put that in you my bio. You've got that. That's going to be my bio uh, tomorrow. And yes, we do know we're on the air. So, with that being said, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff we talk about. If you're from Claysburg, Kimmel, you're probably wondering, who are these guys? What are they talking about? This is what we do. Duck chucking begins. 
Duck didn't chuck. Oh, we got a little dude from Plaisburg out here. Oh, get money. Ooh, great throw by him. Look like he threw an apple. It, oh, oh, I think it's um, half court there. Oh, there's the, a little sticker. Yeah, the volleyball net Maria goes Maria Young, very excited. I think she might be the... Uh, oh, wait, get oh, your butt knocked out. Wow, that's a lot of ducks that are close. I'm telling you, you, you know, it's like... Uh, it's so close. It's like thing. curling almost. You get to knock the other stone out of the way. Uh, Lou Swartz, real excited, Lou. One more duck to go. Lou has a, a technique to it. But that duck horseshoes. looked like it hit its beak and went sideways. Who is the winner? Lou is out there. He's saying, look, <laughs> my duck is right there. Lou uh, helping us out before the game. I want to make sure I mention him. Thanks for his help uh, getting on the interwebs. And Frank Negi, assistant principal here. Frank, uh, a basketball mind. Really missed talking hoops with him. As we got to, you know, it feels like a lifetime ago now, but what is this, third year uh, out, out of basketball for Frank? Yep. Fourth. Wow. Meter, but uh, great basketball guy. Well, they got a winner. Oh, man. Tense moments. And Lou, right, Lou looking right, upset right. about it. Oh, just beside Lou himself. Oh, <laughs> man. Lou, just the <laughs> anticipation. They oh, should wow. do a chuck a duck between every quarter. Uh, I agree. Oh, great there. Again, uh, Josh, I also want to mention this while we have a chance. We'll let you know who won Chuck It because I know all you out there are waiting. Oh, Lou Swartz. Lou. Winner, winner, Chicken Lou Swartz dinner. Sweet Lou, the duck chucker. Lou won $23. <laughs> hey, he's like, ah, oh, that's good. As uh, Ron hey. Cook would say, it's a good day if you can get it. Hey, that's half a driver for Lou. Dan Goldinger in the house. Good to see you, Dan. Nice shirt. Love that. <laughs> Wearing a Slippery Rock. Uh, we were actually just about to talk Slippery Rock with uh, Lou Swartz heading there here in the fall. Dan Goldinger wearing a Slippery Rock hoodie. Liking that black. It's a good look. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I think I think any time I see anybody in Slippery Rock gear, it's my job to, to, to say something to them being an alum. So very proud Slippery Rock alum that is. So, But uh, Dan, our what a th chance to thank Dan. Thanks for all your help all this year. We were talking basketball minds a moment ago with Frank Nagy. Dan Golding here. Uh, He's a basketball mind, all right. Oh, yeah. Giving us uh, kind of seeing the things that we wouldn't see during broadcast, especially up at Armstrong this year. Always great to have that extra eye on the court because sometimes you're looking down at a sheet or looking at your screen and and uh, always helps to have somebody who knows the, the game as well as Dan does to help us out. And we certainly appreciate him and his efforts. The Gene Steratore of High Top Sports Network. <laughs> yeah. Our official rules analyst. Yes. That's the title I gave you. You got to stick with it. Nope, oh, Josh. Uh, I'm going to sure go grab Judd. Yep, grab Judd. You make sure you're uh, make sure you check out Josh's uh, uniform or his uh, shirt. He, no, he's not being uh, interviewed by a coach from Claysburg Kimmel. That's Josh Schreckengost, who will be uh, talking to coach here in a second. But uh, very interesting first half there um, for uh, both teams. West Shemokin offense really humming. The three point uh, game really a big part of that. The uh, Bulldogs starting off a little slow. That was the case in their last game against uh, West Branch. But uh, they're hoping to have the same result as they had against West Branch, and that was have more of a energy coming out of the locker room. They were able to go on a couple runs, one to start the third quarter, and then one towards the end of that game. And um, hopefully uh, for the Bulldogs, they'll be able to get something cooking here as the minutes are few. 16, as a matter of fact, left of this one in this consolation game for District 6 Class 2A. Both teams, of course, will go to the PIAA playoffs that will begin next week. This game really uh, will sort out some things in terms of who the Wolves will play and who the Bulldogs will face. The uh, Season went fast. It's crazy to me how quickly this basketball season went. Really, I said the same thing about the fall, uh, but uh, certainly basketball season it seems like it just started, and here we are. Tomorrow's March 1st. It'd be March 1st if not for the leap year, but, um, man, you blink and the season's over. Crazy. I know. Yep. 
Yeah, and it's it's funny, you know. They always say the busier you are, the quicker things seem to go, and that's certainly the case. You know, when you're in a gym every night watching hoops, uh, it's crazy how quickly things can things can go. But uh, we're uh, see Coach McCullough come out of the locker room. We're going to send it down to Josh here. I think uh, he's going to see if Coach is able to talk quickly uh, and give his uh, assessment here as we head into the second half. Down to Josh. Oh, no, no, Josh, Josh, Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Josh Rangos here with Western Bogan head coach Judd McCullough. Coach, shooting the lights out there in that second quarter. 22 points on the board in the second quarter. Just talk about the ball movement and the way you guys have been shooting. Yeah, I love the ball movement. I think we're being very unselfish. We're finding the open guy. We're making the extra pass, and then we're knocking it down. Alex Talmadge really having a nice night. BR really came alive there. Looks like that ankle's okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he uh, really, uh, we worked hard at getting him back. Uh, back in the flow here this week, and uh, we're pretty smart with his uh, comeback, and uh, he's doing well tonight. 21-point lead here. What do you do in the second half, not take the foot off the gas? Uh, how do you guys approach it? Yeah, we want to play the same way we were, but, you know, the shot selection is going to be key. We have uh -oh. Kind of lost. Uh, thanks, Dan. Appreciate you. Good seeing you. I'm sorry we lost Josh there with that last question, but uh, about what Coach is going to do with that 21-point lead, but sure the Wolves will have a plan. Coach McCullough, awesome, a great coach. Knows his uh, X's and O's uh, like few do. And So we'll uh, see what the Wolves have in store. We got to all your questions there, Josh, except that last one for some reason it cut out. Hmm. Uh, but uh, well, I just said, I asked him how he approached the second half. They have a 21-point lead. I said, obviously, you guys don't want to take your foot off the gas. He said, no, the approach is going to be the same. Move the ball, good shot selection, and, uh, you know, keep pretty much uh, – Keep what they've been doing in the uh, first half. Keep it going. Yeah, and uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it, as they say. And certainly uh, the Wolves look to kind of do more of the same. And really at this point, I think it's just a matter of building confidence and more momentum going into these state playoffs and trying to make some noise when they get there. Um, Josh, I'm going to say that the Wolves, have, they've never won a state playoff game, have they? They have not. I think uh, that was a question we had talked to Coach about couple years back when they made uh, an appearance against Red Bank Valley there at Clarion. I believe that was two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. The likes of uh, Trevor Smolik, Bo Swartz, and that whole gang were... That Tippin... It's Tippin, right? Tip, yep, Tippin Jim. Well, Talmadge losing the handle on that one. My man Big Country gets it ahead up to Haney. And the bucket's good. Oh, man, that was... That was seamless there. The big you. country reference. The full court press there. Great passing. Rogers going to be called for the travel. Good call. The right call. Braden, he's just so quick and fast and athletic that he wants to keep it moving. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the thought and the, what he wants to do with the basketball is ahead of what the body's doing. And good defense, kind of a big part of that as well. Like they, that Brian Reeves reference then. Made a double dribble there. Yeah, Brian Reeves, he wore the, the flat top too. Not even close to what our guy Simpson is wearing, but I love the big country reference. I, I, got, I was called Thank that you. quite a few times when I, when I lived in New York, yeah. Big country. Johns to inbound, getting close to a five-second call, but right in the nick of time, gets it in to Osterling and back to Johns, who will get it to Talmadge, and the Wolves will set up the offense here Just about a minute into this third quarter. 38 to 19 year score. Claysburg with the first bucket of this half. And Josh, as I mentioned there at halftime when you were about to talk to coach, that uh, that's what they did against uh, West Branch as Talmadge misses the three from the near corner. And it came out of the locker room. I think it was an eight to two run. Uh, but uh, as their coach said, uh, you know, time was against them and then of course, another run to counter that by the Warriors. Uh, really uh, close the door in any comeback bid for the Bulldogs. Big country, baseline, crossover. Ooh. Nice move there. By Let's go. My man, Aiden Simpson, showing off some handles. Little bit of a handle there from the big man. I love it. Yeah, I'm a fan of his. He's got the flashy shoes. He's got the head of lettuce there, just immaculate. And the crossover. Oh, yeah. Just In breaking traffic. Ankles. ankles being broken. My man. Rogers up with it. That one swatted away. 
Good defense by the one and only Aiden Simpson. And then coming in behind him was young man honoring Jackie Robinson with his number, Corey Walter. Or Elton Brand. I, it was in his uh, program, the program. Ah, uh, didn't see that. Because he's a, a sophomore. He was still honored with all the other seniors. <laughs> <laughs> so they had his uh, bio in the thing. Ooh. That went off by BR, just a hair to the front of the rim. And well, we had the right angle there to watch BR's release, and he kind of mm -hmm. had to spin inward, Joe, right there, where the ball comes out of your hand. It goes off to the right, where you push it a little bit. So a third foul against Jude Olinger. Man, you love his aggressiveness, um, but also sometimes it'll burn you. We're barely into this third quarter, and he's going to have to take a seat. And in his place, Easton Barrett comes into the basketball game. Deep three by Haney. That Ooh. one's good. Haney showing off the range. Some Dame Lillard range here. Yeah, he's had some deep ones so far in this game. By the young man. And a travel called against Alex Talmadge. Sometimes Alex got to feel that pressure coming behind him. And you can't go to the corner, too. That's the one thing. You can't get trapped in the corner. And too often you see Alex... Heading there and then pick up his dribble, and that's just a recipe for disaster. But a smart kid, a great shooter, and as he gets uh, more and more uh, comfortable in uh, varsity basketball, of course, you know, he could fill it up. He could do a lot of good things. But playing the point guard position is not an easy thing. It's a lot of responsibility, and Alex still kind of growing into that role in that position here for the Wolves in 2024. But uh, light years ahead of uh, where a lot of players are, and players like myself, he's... Think about when my sophomore year, I don't even think I knew how to tie my shoes. Oh, I was tripping all over myself. Yeah, I was like a baby deer. I was like Bambi. <laughs> like when Bambi spins out on the ice, yep, you know, yep. all the legs go out. Yep, that was me on the hardwood. But uh, yeah, Alex, a great player, and uh, man, oh man, he's going to make a push for those thousand points. We talk about oh yeah, elite scores and what Shemokin uh, passed. We are another one. He's probably going to have a nice shot at a thousand. Oh, yeah, for sure. But uh, out of the timeout there, Coach McCullough with a impassioned speech to his team to get it going. And, you know, you may be up by 14, but these uh, Bulldogs not going anywhere. They seem to really uh, thrive in the second half, kind of repeating so far what they did against West Branch. Shot up off the glass and good. That time, I believe that was Anthony Napolitano. You know what, Joe, an 8-0 run here to start the second half for the Bulldogs, so similar to that West Branch game as you mentioned. Yeah, I think that was 8-2 if I'm not mistaken, but I do believe that then West Branch answered with Rogers with the basket. And right on cue, I think West Branch answered with a 19-0 run after that, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I had that story, uh, read that story earlier by the uh, nice folks down at the Bedford Gazette, a sister paper of the Leader Times, which High Top Sports Network is, a, is the uh, content provider for. Rogers trying to complete the three-point play, and he does. 41-26 now. The score. Rogers up to 18 points. Oh, big screen Haney. there by Simpson. Yeah. Putting his shoulder into BR's face. And Barrett getting called for a foul. That was a, a, a call. I'm going to say that Simpson uh, straps on the pads in the fall. What do you think? Uh, yes. <laughs> and he makes people eat mud. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Face in the turf. Left open there in the corner. Yeah, no uh, intention on shooting. It was Politano, but uh, maybe not his strength. Haney certainly has that strength. We've seen him hit a couple NBA range threes yeah. here tonight. Good ball movement here in the second half by the Bulldogs there. Another case of Big Country up and good. Nearly a three-point play. And don't look now, but down by 13 are Aiden Simpson and the Bulldogs. Simpson now up to four points. Shot by Rogers. Rattles out. No good. Easton Barrett with the board. Up with it. No good. And a jump ball called in the middle of it. Who else but Aiden Simpson? 
Well, Barrett not getting any love right there under the hoop. Got the offensive rebound. Tried to turn and go back up. Simpson with the quick hands. Got his hand on the ball. Yeah. Forced the jump ball. You know, I, I made the uh, assessment that he's probably getting his hands, putting his hand in the dirt and playing football. He might be a, he might be a little tight end or something. Hey, man. Got Maybe the mitts. Guys. Got the mitts for sure. And an offensive foul. Moving screen there. He's going to go against Napolitano, the senior forward. Got the very warm looking sleeves on. Yeah. Couldn't wear the full sleeves. I had a cutoff under my uniform. That was just to make the feel of our bulky worn just early two thousands uniform. That the one long sleeve down your shooting arm. Mm. That was a that was a nineties thing. Was it? Yeah, we, I had some people that did that. I didn't that. know the sleeves were really a thing until like the two thousands. But you're probably right. Oh, nice jump stop there by Johns. And a nice looking. Shot there from uh, inside the paint. You don't see enough of those, I feel like, sometimes from the Wolves, but John's very... Oof. Good Oof. hands by Talmadge. I thought he knocked that off of uh, Napolitano's... Dirty paws by uh, yeah. a Monsters and Men playing there for about half a second. That was a, qu that was a quick identification there. Thank you. I think, and uh, a uh, timeout for, uh, for us. But um, I feel flattered, but um, as I look over at the... Uh, Claysburg Kimmel bench here quickly. Uh, I hope the folks notice that you are dressed for the occasion. We'll go back, we'll go back there. You have the uh, very same shirt on. You know, the only difference is the patch on the lapel. Yep. But uh, uh, immediately noticed by the fine folks at the scores table. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, before oh my, my mic came live, I said to Judd, I said, "I'm sorry, I wore the opposing <laughs> team's colors to your gym tonight," and he just laughed. <laughs> and I said, "It's oh. the exact same shirt." I wonder if they got it at the same place. You know, if this is, in fact, my last broadcast ever, it's been fun. <laughs> oh, man, come on. How high are you up in the sky when you're in a plane? Like 30,000? Yeah, 38,000. Yeah. 38, so just I'm cruising, six foot four. Just cruising right down the... Uh, Think about how many Joes you'd have to stack on top of each other to get that high. That's a lot of Joes. Yeah. You fall from that high, you're done. Oh, yeah, definitely done. It's really hard to come back from. Although there are these like amazing stories of people that have like gotten sucked out of planes and stuff and like, <laughs> lived. Like, what are you how? doing? Like you just like you hit some trees first. Talk about a will to live. Slow it down. <laughs> slow was, it down. There was a stewardess uh, or a flight attendant, but this was back or in the seventies. Or man, Sean McCullough. They were uh, called stewardesses back then, mm -hmm. and she got uh, like the cabin. There was a crack in the in the fuselage, and it sucked her right. It was like, whoosh, and she was like thirty thousand feet up. Jeez. And she lived. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was. She's from like Poland or something, and uh, Polish, very durable people. Well, she basically came down through trees. Like she aimed. She had like thirty broken bones, but she lived. Shot up, no good, but it's going to be off the hands of Ezra Osterling and stay here with the Bulldogs, who trail by fifteen. Three forty-one left, third quarter. Class two A, consolation game of District Six. I'm going to use another language, but. I Quickly, with it quick enough to remember what it was in Spanish or French. <laughs> Set. In there you go. Thank you. A little blocking foul called against Rogers on the baseline, trying to cut off the dribble drive of Haney. Well, they're gonna say four. It's seis in Spanish, right? They call it against number four. That's or quattro. Thirty-four. I don't know that number. Right. Number two. Oh, they got it right again. It is on Rogers, but I swore I heard the referee say four. Maybe he's golfing. Maybe. Speaking of golf, make sure you stop in at Bird's Foot Golf Club. Yeah. The weather's going to be warming up, and that's a great place to spend the warm days of the spring, summer, and fall. I know I spend about 87% of any warm days uh, there. Because I love the golf. Ooh. Nice job there by Barrett to strip it away. I thought it might have kicked off of the shooter's foot but uh, they're going to say last touch the Wolves we will stay here with the Bulldogs 315 remaining here in this third quarter just 11 minutes and 15 seconds left of this one when big country it. shot up and fouled nice move there by Simpson love his game big man getting to the line want to give a quick get well soon to West Shemokin Girls volleyball head coach Melinda Osterling had knee surgery. Oh, Coach O, I didn't know this. Yeah, she was. I saw her. She had a uh, like a walker. I said, "What happened?" She had knee, knee surgery. So uh, get well soon, Coach O. Yeah, Coach O, get well. Hopefully, we'll see you here soon because the boys volleyball season kicking off, and Coach O, for all that know, a huge part of that staff. Uh, 
like I said, uh, called one of the biggest timeouts I've ever seen in oh, my yeah. entire life covering sports, the one that swayed a championship game. That, of course, the uh, District 6 Boys Volleyball Championship two years ago. Wolves were down two games to none in a pivotal timeout in that third set. Turned the tide, and uh, Wolves able to win it in five. Yeah, unreal. Shot by Rogers. Good. Uh, he's feeling it right now. Yeah, he missed the last few, and you know, he liked that. You could tell that uh, some relief seen on his face. Oh, step around move by Simpson. No oh. good. And that's off of Ezra Osterling and back to the Bulldogs. But I want to say quickly about Simpson, just great fundamental plays. The shot fake, then the step around. Got his defender off of his feet. And smartly using the step around move. Don't see it enough. Well, they changed that call. The Wolves got possession after that. Ooh. Switched it at the very last second there. So despite the uh, great efforts of Simpson, Wolves will get the basketball back. John's little runner up and good. Travis Johns. That was a semi-finger roll. Yeah, he's up to seven points now. 2.28 remaining third quarter. Well, Travis had to have gained some confidence hitting those big threes against the Colts in that semi-final game and carrying it over into this one. As you said, seven points for Travis Johns. Shooting foul, getting to the line is Haney. Nice drive by that young man. He's been impressive tonight. He is up to 15 points. The team's leading scorer and the second most points in this game behind Braden Rogers, 21. Looking to add to his total right here. First one rattled home. And Jude Olinger will check back in. Looks like he's going to go in. Oh, I didn't see who came out. I think Barrett. Barrett. Yep, yeah. Easton Barrett. I'm not sure if you mentioned it. I think you did, but Braden Haney, just a sophomore here for the Bulldogs. So nice okay. uh, nice stroke by him. He's got a, you can tell he's got the game. Indeed. He looks like he's going to have a bright future ahead of him. He's up to 17 points now. Foul against the Bulldogs. We got an are you blind that's, from the Cla uh, Claysburg fans. The third against the aforementioned Haney, so he's going to have to be careful here for the remainder of this one. Still got 10 minutes left in this game, nearly a steal. Jude Olinger is going to go to the hoop, jump stop, dishes it oh. out. Tough pass there, traffic under the hoop. and Bulldogs pounce on the turnover, and Haney at the other end, up and good. He's up to 19 now. Jude with one of the most pronounced jump stops I've ever seen there. I was going to say that, actually. <laughs> One of the more louder ones, his feet came down hard. Talmadge pulls up from the top of the arc, rebounded by Osterling, and the Wolves will reset with 1.36 left. Travis John's pleading for that one. He's going to get it here now. A little pass fake back to Osterling, over to Talmadge. Good ball movement by the Wolves. 1.26 left. Johns thinks about it, pass fake, kicks it out. Yeah, and that's been uh, something that's been consistent, I think, throughout for the Wolves here tonight. That quick passing and more often than not, pretty good passing. Certainly turnovers have plagued them at uh, di very different stretches, I should say. But for the most part, quick passes and doing a good job of keeping the uh, defense off balance as a result. John picks up the dribble, but there is Ezra with it. He goes up, and that's going to be a charge. Oh. Yep. Definitely the right call, I do believe. He's uh, doing a good job of getting set up in advance there. It was number 33, Anthony uh, Napolitino. Napolitano, excuse me, the forward listed as 5'11 and a senior. Maybe a shade under 5'11. You no, know, I never say, I always say senior or junior. Never just be like a 12th grader. Yeah. <laughs> shot up and a nice job of doing a shot fake step around himself was number 22, Elias Rich. You haven't really heard from him here uh, really since early on in the game. Yeah, I was going to say, had a couple of buckets in that first quarter, but, as, yeah, as you said, Joe, quiet sense. Sitting at five points, that was Richie. Hasn't committed a foul either. That was not me when I played. If I didn't have a foul by 44 seconds left in the third quarter, I probably wasn't, I hadn't gotten in the game. <laughs> <laughs> or I was hurt. Got popped by somebody like, uh, like my man Aiden Walters. Or Aiden Simpson, excuse me. Those Clean. guys used to seek me out. They're yeah, like, look at that out stick. on a screen. Look at that 6'4", yeah. 170-pound 
branch of a player. Yeah, I'm going to clean him out on a screen. Yep, 100%. Yeah, I got a few of those in my day as well. So 48-34, one for two on that trip. Oh, he's running to the football players. You get screened off, and you can hear oh, yeah. every vertebrae in your and back they, and, and your they, neck they crack. They loved it. They loved it. They saw me before the game, heard a scouting report about me, and just, were just you know, ready to go. I'm going to say frothing at the mouth. Yeah. Foaming. Foaming, thank you. Your frothing would be a little strange. Well, Talmadge, I think, has maybe a spot of blood on him. He's like, what? Oh, he does have a little blood. Yeah, he yeah. does. What? what do you do if you can't get that out? It is. Yeah, what do you do if you don't know where you're bleeding? Or if it's from another player? Yeah. He's looking around. He's got it on his back, too, so it's obviously not from him. <laughs> Talmadge won it back in that game quickly. He's like, Coach, I don't know where it is. What do I do? Eric Spencer, assistant coach, just grabbed him and started taking him toward. Uh, and a quick shot there by the newly entered Aiden Osterling. Wow, Spencer forcefully grabbing Talmadge and throwing him out the door. He's like, go, go wash your jersey. Get that blood off you. We didn't even think, know it was from him. He was kind yeah. of looking around very confused. I don't think it was. There was a spot on his back, too. So, And a chance here now at the free throw line for Haney to break into that 20-point category. Doesn't do it on that one as it's short. 20 seconds left. And the Bulldogs trolling by 14. Barrett Haney. coming in for Osterling right there. Yeah, good move with Osterling. A couple fouls to his name. Ooh, falling down there, tough play. And Olinger with a oh, man. clear out. Ooh, man is right. Oh, boy. Haney got it good. And, and a turnover by Johns, pushing both ways. So I think, and you saw Big Country, and he took exception to that. That definitely was a, I'm not going to say retaliatory, but uh, an eye for an eye, I guess. is. That's retaliatory. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to say it in a less blatant way. <laughs> Aiden Osterling in the game, first yeah. time. No, yeah, as I said, he shot a three there a moment ago. As soon as he came in, literally stepped on the floor, caught the ball, and shot it. Hey, that's what you the ball was do. in the air longer than he'd been on the court. And uh, nice, smart job there, letting that yeah. ball roll. Seven seconds left by Richie. Richie kicks it. Second left, got to put it up. Richie does, and it's no good, nearly getting that one to go. And that's how things will conclude here in the third quarter. Even though our scoreboard says it's the second, it's lying, I apologize for that. We're heading to the fourth with your score, West Shemokin 48 and the Bulldogs of Claysburg Kimmel 34. Josh, take it away. Well, we'll put it on the Claysburg Kimmel cheerleaders here and thank all of our premier sponsors. Steffi's Country Catering, Get your always on. on board with whatever we do. We love Terry. And uh, more so, we love his cooking. Uh, make sure you look up Steffi's Country Catering. Search Delicious. Terry Steffi on Facebook. Look for those Sunday takeout specials. And, of course, uh, get, get your event catered, big or small. Steffi's can do it all. Mention High Top Sports Network and receive a 10% discount when you cater your next event with Steffi's Country Catering. Thanks also to Phoenix Physical Therapy here in Rural Valley. Brian Brooks, the director out there. Brian the man. He called me up, said, are you doing the consolation game? I said, we certainly are. He said, we're in. Love Brian. He's a real G. Brian is an OG. Yep, big supporter of ours here on High Top Sports Network. Kind of one of the OGs, I would say. One of oh, the yeah, he's People that, uh, you know, when we started this in 2000, 2000, geez. Yeah, I was uh, 12. Uh, 2000, that would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah, you would have been. Still at it after all these years. 24-year-old Josh Schreckengard, no, 22-year-old Josh Schreckengard, yeah. 12-year-old Joe Rhodes. Fresh thought, out of college. We're smart, we have a plan. Wearing and hair we're, gel. Yep, me, I would, didn't know what hair gel was yet. I soon found out the year later, though, look at my school pictures, I had the whole bang <laughs> flip-up thing, if you can remember that. Oh, I remember it, I rocked it. Yep. And a save there, but the Wolves get it back. Rodgers to the hoop, up, contacted, oh. and good. What a finish. Able to hang in the air. Did he switch hands, Josh? Yes, he did. Man, oh, man. What a move by Rodgers. All a, a byproduct of his ability to kind of hang in the air like that. Taking the bump and able to switch hands and flip it up there, and it gets the roll. Heck of a shot there by Rodgers. He's up to 23, Joe. 
guy that could really hang in the air. He wore number 23, uh, LeBron James. <laughs> no, Michael Jordan, of course. I'm LeBron James. Yeah. Harold Miner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Rodgers completes the three-point play. There's a foul called quickly on the other end. Tune in for your mid-90s NBA references. Oops, I should probably switch the camera. My bad. Foul's going to go against uh, Braden Rodgers. Nope, I'm sorry. That's, yeah. Nope, yes. Yes, that's going against Rodgers. My bad. His name on the bottom of the, uh, the scoreboard up there. Oh, Jude. Jumping that pass. Uh, they're trying to get the ball inside to Simpson and Olinger. Great play. Anticipates it. Knocks it away. And we're going to get... That is Travis Johns got cleaned out there after the play. And Johns not pleased. It's about being uh, things getting kind of... Yeah, they're getting chippy. He got elbowed in the head. And he's saying, do not take me out of this game. And Coach McCullough says, you're a little too heated right now, Travis. Aiden Oso oh, he Ooh. takes a seat. Oh, I love that. Coach McCullough Let leaving Travis in the game. You got to love that fight. You got to yeah. love that fight. You know, I do love the fight. I, I, Travis is one of those kids. He's not going to retaliate. He just wants to get out there and put the ball in the, the hoop and, you know, retaliate that way on the scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a gamer. Not only does he, he turns it over there, unfortunately, on the other way, travel. Whoa. That was uh, quite a few steps, but uh, John's with the turnover there. And that's a, a tough one. A foul. Corey Walter gonna get a chance with yeah. a three point play there. Hmm. I'm not, man, there's quite a few steps. Great steal. But, you know. Yep. But uh, hey, give credit to Walters. Like you said, a heck of a steal, a great anticipation. He's able to knock down the free throw, so. 14-point advantage now for the Wolves. Thrown in, Rodgers with a dangerous pass again by Jones. Back-to-back -back turnovers off the inbound and oh. deflected off the Bulldogs who oh, wow. are absolutely livid. John McCullough barking out a inbound play for the, or inbound play for the team in white. You know, it's funny, sometimes the games get the chippiest with teams that don't know each other, you know? it's You'd figure it'd be like in the Marion Center game. They played each other three times. They're 15 minutes apart. You know, that, that would be the game. Haney, the answer on the other end. Josh, quickly, I want to say, go back. Coach called that inbounds play, and it worked to perfection. What a great coaching move there by Judd McCullough. Knew what the, he needed out of that play. And a technical oh foul against Claysburg Kimmel. Just a, not a smart play there. Uh, your team climbing back into this one. That, stuff like that will get you get you sent uh, or get you on the wrong side of things rather quickly. Well, Lou Swartz helped to buy that one. He was right in that official's ear. <laughs> I mean, he was screaming. I could hear him over here. He's saying, tee him up, tee him up, and he got it. The technical going against uh, Treon. Shot good by Talmadge. Lou Swartz uh, contributing to this broadcast greatly tonight, helping us get on the air and then also inducing a technical foul. I Lou saw Swartz. him outside and he, uh, he goes, boy, I'm cold. I go, I'll bet with that outfit on. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, Lou. Uh, he does get cold despite his uh, Hulk size. Yeah, if he's not moving, he's not generating heat, so uh, get cold quick. So 39 to 55. Again, it, you know, Bulls get the basketball back after the two made free throws. Just a tough, tough uh, thing there. Frustration boiling over. I believe that was number 40, uh, Christian Treon with the technical foul. How now, is there only a minute gone in this quarter? I think the clock uh, stopped for about three. It feels like three. it Talmadge, well, nearly a little push off there. And Treon staying in the game. Too. Did you ever notice that, though, what I was saying before, that the, the, the chippiest games are, are teams you oh, don't know? Big country with the stare down. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing the body around. Yeah, that's getting real physical now ever since that uh, play earlier with that involved uh, Jude Olinger. Talmadge, though, earns a trip to the free throw line. I'm sorry, Josh. Get, please finish. Uh, oh, no. Um, when you played, did, did you feel like the games that got the chippiest were teams you didn't know? I feel like 
boy, a chippy game would make sense between them and Marion Center because they played three times. They know each other. They're right up the road from one another. You figure that would be the game that got chippy. No, it's a team Claysburg Kimmel that, you know, you never see. And it's getting really chippy out there. Physical. Uh, Talmadge knocking down two uh, there. But to your point, Josh, I'm actually going to say no, at least in the case of, like, myself and where we played because we played in the heritage conference where unlike the whip you'll you're changing your sections constantly your the familiarity isn't there you know a lot of the times we were playing kids that we've been playing since we were in middle school and that we played even in elementary school a lot of times so the rivalries and then the battles and the one-on-one -on -one kind of battles olinger somehow gets another one kicks it out john's with the three back rim no good and osterling nearly committing a foul there Way with it is Haney, but to my point, Josh, I think just really the dynamic is in here in Indiana County where I played. Ooh, travel. Yep, and that's uh, the call as Haney wanted to buy the continuation and foul, but to no avail. Uh, to wrap up what I was saying there, Josh, I think just where I played in the Heritage Conference, of course, the Conference of Wolves now playing. Um, a lot of those Heritage Conference battles got pretty pretty hot. And I'm certain that uh, all my technical fouls in high school took place uh, within Heritage Conference games. At least the ones I can remember. <laughs> I think I had three. Better ask. Uh, be, I'd be better off asking uh, Penn's Manor girls basketball coach Jason Melozer. He would definitely save me from about ten. <laughs> oh yeah. You had to save him once. I saw it on video. I I did. Well, I also got in a guy's face for pushing him down. That was my point guard. You were like T.O. defending Tony Romo, getting real teary. That's yeah. my point guard, man. Most certainly, Jason Lozer was, uh, was, my, was my point guard. And uh, a heck of one, a heck of a coach as he uh, led the Penns Manor girls to another Heritage Conference title at the KCAC this year. Another oh. turnover on an inbounds play by West Shemokin. Man, oh man, that's hurt them here of late as Treyon able to finish at the other end. and Back within 16 are the Bulldogs of Claysburg Kimmel. Five minutes, 12 seconds left. Talmadge with the basketball. Over to Rogers on the near side. Fakes out the defender, goes in. Mm. A blocking call against Big Country. He doesn't like that. Shakes his head in the direction of the referee that made the call. Simpson's uh, put his uh, fingerprints on this game. Yeah, I, I like the way he's playing. You look up and at the elbows. scoreboard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> look up at the scoreboard, and he only has five points, but he has really been uh, a factor here tonight for the Bulldogs. Real physical getting in there, scrapping for boards, and not letting the Wolves kind of just run around and, and, and push their way you know, to an easy win. He's, he's putting it all on the line here tonight. Rogers up to 27 now after that made free throw. And speaking of free throws, Josh, the Wolves really doing a good job uh, from the charity stripe here in these waning moments when you want to be strong at the line. I think BR's career high is 32. I'm not 100% sure on that, but. Swatted away there by Osterling. He's getting close. Oh, off the knees of Simpson and back to the Wolves. Big country with a leap there and the headband off. Laying out for that ball, uh, hustling. Just unable to save it back. Uh, definitely uh, Simpson, sort of the, the uh, enforcer. You know, this isn't hockey, but... Uh, Definitely kind of that role and puts his size, uh, incorporates his size. A nice job there by Talmadge to kind of leap from the baseline outward and always a move I like to see, especially guys that aren't necessarily the tallest, but Haney with an answer on the other end. That was deep right there. But that's where, uh, you know, to give Talmadge some credit, those are the kind of plays that uh, you could see that he's making now that he didn't necessarily make earlier in the season. Yeah. You know, going baseline like that and using his body oh as he turns it over. Just trying to pay you a compliment, Alex, and you <laughs> turn it over. But nice jump stop on the other end, up and good. And turnover is mounting for West Shemokin as Judd McCullough is going to call a full timeout. Josh, uh, I want to thank another one of our sponsors, if, Do I, it. if I may. Again, I want to thank Carson Boyer Funeral Home, uh, where they uh, are community service and certainly uh, a part of the community with uh, not just their services, but their contributions and helping people like us uh, do what we do. Uh, not not just us, but they do that with several other organizations, businesses, leagues, and, um, you know, Brian Myers and the folks there, they put their hard-earned money into uh, so many different community-related things, and 
it makes you almost feel honored that uh, they decide to you know, sponsor these broadcasts because they see value in what we do. So we thank Brian and the folks at Carson Boyer Funeral Home. Not just you can buy monuments of all types, as I said here uh, many times. I'm going to buy Josh a sort of something that maybe like bird's foot to let me put something on a hole. I, uh, you might be buying one here within the next a few days uh, uh, no as I'm going on a uh, trip here. Uh, and I'm going to be on a plane tomorrow. And I rode a plane. Uh, so be a, say you're put a, you know, put in a good word for me with throw the big guy up. upstairs during your hey, prayers. Throw it up in the sky for Joe. He's yeah, flying. Tomorrow around noon I'll be. Uh, He's not, he doesn't like flying. I'll be, uh, what that, oh man, ma quick math here. I don't know, about 10,000 Joe Roses high in the sky? <laughs> More than that, I think. Oh, no. Maybe if I was three feet tall, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. So, well, Less five, than that. 5,000 5, Joes <clears throat> high. 5,000 Joes in the air? Yeah. That's like a uh, measurement of time and, and space, like nine car. <laughs> nine car. Great Rogers with a bucket. He's over 30 points, or excuse me, at 30 points now with that. Made bucket. Travel, yep. I saw that too. Trayon under there was moving his feet while he uh, didn't have a dribble. Picked it up coach's, after one. Coach's timeout there by Coach McCullough. You see uh, the Wolves score quickly and then force a turnover at the other end. So, Josh, uh, if you would, thank another one of our sponsors. Again, we're so grateful for them, especially this time of year when things start costing a little bit uh, just to do one game. You start having to really empty the old wallet. Drop, we're glad uh, to do so. Drop those checks. Thanks to Ryan Bowser State Farm, downtown Ford City. Um, you know, just a tremendous guy. He's not our insurance agent, but he has provided us with valuable knowledge as we yeah. rebuild from what was a pretty devastating fire back in October. And Ryan has really answered our questions, Joe, and, and put us at ease uh, with a lot, a lot of answers because, let's face it, we're not insurance people. I don't know the lingo. Uh, not a lot of people out there do. And Ryan, uh, you know, gives up his time freely to us, it answers any question we have, uh, and he'll do the same for you and more. So check him out online, ryanbowsersf.com. Tremendous agent, tremendous guy, and tremendous supporter of what we do. Uh, Ryan's been uh, an OG, a day one guy. So thanks to Ryan Bowser, State Farm. Yeah, thanks to Ryan again, as Josh said. You know, it's been a, it's been a trek for us. I didn't say Shrek, I said trek. Yeah. Um, since October when we had our, a fire that destroyed our office completely and a lot of our personal belongings were in there as well. We had two cats, uh, Rip Rip to Scrappy and Didn't make Cruz. Um, devastating stuff, but, uh, you know, from the ashes you must rise and we tried to do so and uh, Ryan Bowser uh, with his advice and his support here on the broadcast, a big reason why we've been able to, again, trek on through and, and uh, you know, Keep doing what we love, and that's be uh, in these gymnasiums, on these fields, in these arenas, uh, calling games. Sports are amazing, and boy, oh boy, they've been therapeutic for us. John's in the lane. Nice shot there. Kiss off the glass. Good finish. Yeah, that's a tough shot. It's harder than it looks, uh, just because you got to kind of kiss it off the glass and just control that uh, force. And he does a good job of it there. But, Ooh. but a baseline runner. Nice like looking that. shot there by Haney. I'll tell you what, he went up and just so smooth. Just Those those shots are really tough, too, because you know, Joe, you can't, you go up, you can't shoot it like you shoot a regular shot. You just kind of have to let it go. Yeah, yeah, and it's so hard to control, and you kind of got to got to kind of put some touch on it, obviously, and kind of get it higher off the glass. Uh, you know, the momentum is so so tough to control, too, when you're kind of coming that quickly to the basket like he was. And boy, oh, boy, he's playing uh, a lot. 26. Uh, he's having a game. Uh, yeah, well, I was actually still talking about John's little uh, stop oh, yeah, pop there, yeah. little runner off the glass. That's a tough shot. Yeah, runner baseline's no easy uh, uh, feat either. But uh, two really nice plays in the lane. Again, flashy basketball can happen inside the three-point arc for those out there. That <laughs> Had to get a dig NBA. on the three. Yep. Yep. John Somebody out there's probably saying, "Oh, I bet he can't shoot threes. <laughs> you John, know what? You're right. John Bowser goes, "He hates threes, doesn't he?" Oh yeah, 100 percent. Dunk it. Oh, it's uh, up and good. I'm nice. giving him the business for that. <laughs> nice uh, pass there. With the Wolves take a 19-point wow. lead and a continuation called and bucket good. <laughs> nice job there by Eli um, Elias Ritchie. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Richie, with the good finish in traffic right there, the little uh, you know jump between two guys, bring it down, and then be able to spin it after contact. 
Elias Richie, not to be confused with former Pirates catching prospect, uh, Elias Diaz. <laughs> or Lionel Richie. Or, yep. Did the Pirates have a pitcher named Richie? Yeah, they did. Yeah. What was his name? Oh, uh... Oh, that's going to bug me. Yeah, it'll come to me. So 67 to 51, your score. 229 left here in the fourth quarter. Todd. Todd Ritchie? Is that it? Todd Ritchie? I think, yeah. He was there when they had the uh, gray caps with the away uniforms. I love those, those gray the, caps. Yeah, those the late 90s days. Oh, oh Rogers! Wow, stick With it. the bucket, it's good, and he's going to go to the line, a place he's been a lot in this second half. And what a nice play there by Rogers, who is now at 32 points, playing big at the biggest moments. Braden Rogers having a big game. That's just touch right there. Wow. Touching. Not, not just that, but the ability to get up. Really impressive with uh, Braden Rogers, really all season long. Very oh. athletic team, but he gets the offensive board thanks to the little tip there by Ezra Osterling. 69 51, the score. Two, two Wolves, excuse me, Josh, with uh, 20 or more points. That, of course, Rogers with 32. And then didn't realize Alex Talmadge with 20 now. Oh, Ooh, Ezra at the left hand. Up and good. 71 to 51 now. Wolves back up by 20. So Bulldogs with a nice little spurt out of the locker room in the second half. But the Wolves, another baseline runner by Haney. Boy, same is he shot. nice. Yeah, same shot there. 26, or excuse me, 28 points now for Haney. He's been fun to watch. But uh, Ezra with the nice little left hand there on that last possession by the Wolves. We're getting to uh, NBA All-Star game defense here now. Yeah. Well, the Richie playing nice and tight there on BR. Oh. Kick out. Oh, Jude didn't Jude, pop it. Jude thinking about it, and there's a trip on purpose by. The uh, the afford, well, the uh, previously technical. Oh, he's, he's done. He's gone. But uh, Wolves. Uh, fan section, letting uh, the Simpson hear it. <laughs> Did you hear that? I heard what the Wolves uh, fan base <laughs> said. PR gets a hand as he uh, exits the game. Josh? See you later. And there was, a, it sounded like about a, an 11 year old boy over here go, it said, See your mom later. Oh, what, why would they be seeing? I don't know. It's just, that's why I said interesting response. Bucket good there by. Jude Olinger, and there now BR will take a seat and get a well-deserved applause from the crowd. Nice game by BR. Boy, really started to light it up in the second quarter. And then, uh, you know, kept it going throughout. Olinger good on both free throws there. 20-point lead for the Wolves, up and fouled as the aforementioned Richie, the point guard of these Bulldogs. Uh, entering the game, I should mention, uh, for BR there a moment ago. Well, that's number 23, that of course. Vince Harkelrode. And another loud in his final home game. You gotta love it. Ezra Osterling. Nice well deserved. That young man, not just uh, fun to watch and uh, plays the game hard, but as we know, Josh, you know this, a great kid, as the case is with uh, all the Osterling uh, youngsters. We've gotten to cover, this is now our third. And then, uh, of course, Aiden, the fourth. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's true. He said, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been fun, and uh, all those Osterlings, good kids. and Tremendous family. Yep. And uh, well-deserved uh, oh, applause it there. there for uh, Osterling in his last home game ever. He'll be back on this hardwood here in a week or so for when the volleyball season kicks off and the Wolves try to win their fifth straight District 6 championship. Oh, the hustle by Ezra. Or, or, or excuse me. Uh, there was Jude Hollinger. Jude just uh, going to say a word, something to the walls, but... And he's going to get a loud applause as well for his hustle for the West Shemokin faithful. And
Aiden getting tall. Yeah. Aiden Ostrowing, very lengthy. Good to see. It's going to be helpful in the hardwood here in a couple weeks, so again, when the volleyball season kicks off. But more basketball to be had in the meantime for West Shemokin. They can head to the state playoffs for a second time in three years. Joe McCall doing a great job this season, Josh. You mentioned it and chronicled it. Whew, big three there by Haney. 31 for him now. Boy, has he been nice for, uh, oops, wrong side. The old warm up the bus chant yep. signifies the end. And that's where things will end here. Your final score, West Shemokin 73, Claysburg Kimmel 58 here. And the Wolves, third place finisher in District 6, and Claysburg Kimmel the fourth place recipient. Uh, both will, of course, head to the state playoffs, Josh, and that's where things are going to get mighty, mighty tough for both of these teams. Um, but uh, a good showing by the Wolves here tonight. Uh, focus on the winner first. Actually, we'll talk about Claysburg Kimmel. Some of the things I noticed, I think, Josh, quickly to entering our post game, uh, presented by Schulteis Roofing. Or I, think, Josh? I think it did. Uh, oh, boy. I, I had it on my... Uh, on my cellular device here. Yeah, I want to make sure we thank the our post, post game sponsor is uh, Carson Boyer Funeral Home. Sorry about that. A little We're brain freeze there. The post game presented by Carson Boyer Funeral Home Monuments. Uh, my takeaway for Claysburg Kimmel um, turnovers kind of a, a detriment there, as they were for the Wolves, we'll talk about. But uh, turnovers really killed them. Uh, got into some foul trouble as well. Uh, but the things you got to like, they move the ball really well at times, I think. And, of course, Haney, what a bright spot for them. Yeah, 31. Just a, a sophomore putting down 31 here in a game, playoff game on the uh, court. He's never played on, I'm sure. Uh, mighty impressive. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Uh, so congratulations to Haney um, putting 31 on the board. Uh, number two uh, for the Bulldogs. And for the Wolves here on this uh, Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments postgame, got to uh, – Got to really start, I think, and finish with the Wolves shooting. I think it was very efficient. Uh, kind of uh, worries you when they put up as many threes as they were there early on, but when you're making them, you're making them, and you really can create some distance between you and the opponent whenever you're making those threes, and they were there early on. And It seemed as though, and it kind of sometimes seems like, when West Shemokin gets going from three, it makes the entire offense that kind of start clicking, even when they do decide to put it on the floor and get to the hoop or get to the bucket or get, you know, when they drove, uh, they're, you know, they're in the foul line uh, quite often as well. So uh, where they cleaned up and, and shot a pretty high percentage. Don't have that number for you, um, and, and, you know, necessarily, but doing a good job from the charity stripe where the Wolves here, especially down the stretch. You saw BR knock down uh, several. You saw uh, Talmadge knock down several. And uh, both those young men. I just mentioned uh, with 20 points or more in this contest, I think uh, Talmadge finished with 20 on the dot, if I'm not mistaken, Josh. Yes, he did. And then BR again with 32 for the Wolves. So 52 of the 73 points coming from those two young men. It's a high percentage. It is indeed. But uh, those are kind of my uh, quick little uh, bullet points, what I noticed. And Wolves, uh, it's a good game, I think, the kind of game you want to see heading into the state playoffs where the things you like to do, you did well. Of course, shoot the basketball from, from range and then uh, – Ball movement was exceptional tonight, too, from the Wolves, I thought. Uh, again, great coaching by Judd. Uh, called that timeout at the right time. That mid bounds play at the right time. Um, some, uh, you know, good coaching timeouts. We can talk that way in volleyball often, but I think yeah. sometimes in basketball it's, it's true as well. And uh, coach, uh, coach in midseason form as well uh, for these Wolves. So fun to watch what they can do here uh, in uh, the PIAA playoffs that'll be starting here next week and uh, congratulations to the Wolves and the, the Bulldogs for that matter for clinching the PIAA uh, playoff spots. Uh, Josh, the uh, second time in three years that the Wolves will head to. Thank you, Frank Nagy, the one and only. We were talking about Frank oh, during man, the broadcast. Little man's getting big. The little man is getting big, but I uh, appreciate Frank helping us out before the game. Uh, we were saying, Coach, I said to Josh on the air, uh, Coach Nagy, I said, how long has it been since we were talking X's and O's with Frank? He said four years, and I go, four years. So you got to be basketball coaching in the future, yes. Yeah, we'll see. We get a, we get a, we get a very non-committal. We'll see from from uh, former political. West Shemokin girls uh, head basketball coach, state semifinalist, district six champion Frank Nagy. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. A little wry <laughs> smile. So we'll, I'll, I'll take that for what I want it to be. That maybe we'll see him soon. 
we'll be talking hoops. But uh, appreciate Frank. Always great to see him. Um, but uh, oh, I don't, forgot where I was at there, Josh. Really doesn't matter. Nah, it but, doesn't. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, take it away. I'm going to look up the bracket real fast if you want. <clears throat> well, I will say one thing. Uh, the Wolves, whoever they face, it's probably it's going to be District 10 opponent, I believe. When I was talking to Coach McCullough, I believe they're going to Erie um, uh, or District 10 area uh, to face their next opponent here in the state tournament. And if I'm that opponent, I am pressing them all game long. They did not handle it well tonight. Travis Johns had a rough night on the inbounds. I mean, they did it so many things well. But really, if I'm the opponent, I'm pressing and I'm contesting every, every shot. Because once they get hot, it's like uh, hitting in baseball. You know, they say hitting is contagious in baseball. Well, guess what? Shooting is contagious in basketball. And they got hot and you got four guys. And no, no Braden Talmadge tonight. A uh, little surprised. And don't know what the deal is with him. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, that's a great uh, observation there, Josh. It really didn't dawn on me until you said it. Yeah, and uh, I didn't really notice it until the end of the game whenever people started coming out. And I thought, well, Braden's not in. Uh, hopefully not an injury sustained in that Northern Cambria game, which was very, very physical. As I said, BR, uh, high ankle sprain there, but he came back from that. It must not have been a sprain because, you know, he was taped up pretty high. He didn't look like he had that much tape on him tonight, and Coach McCullough said that he was moving around pretty well, so probably just rolled it really hard there uh, against the Colts. But Brayton Talmadge not in tonight, but he could shoot the three. They got five guys out there that could shoot the three. And whoever their opponent's going to be has to stretch their defense, has to get it a little further out than Claysburg Kimmel did tonight to be able to contest those threes because West Shemokin got way too many open looks tonight uh, for my liking. If I'm the opposing coach, it was, you know, Talmadge, look, I don't care if they're three steps beyond. These kids can hit them. Uh, Talmadge showed it. John showed it. And, of course, BR showed it as well. So... They're going to have to look for a team that is going to be pressing them, and they got to work on that. I'm sure Coach McCullough would tell you the exact same thing. they uh, they got to handle the pressure a little bit better. But congratulations to the Wolves. I said it against in that Northern Cambria game. I said it in the regular season finale against Montauk. I did not see this out of this team before the year. Honestly, I did not. A district semifinalist and a, a trip to the state tournament, I didn't see it. And Coach McCullough, to his credit, he saw it, he believed it, and, you know, he said... One of the things that makes it possible for a team like this to take a jump like they did this year is that how close these guys are. They're all really, really tight off the course. Or off the course, I was going to say off the court. A couple of them play golf together uh, on the school team. A couple of them play volleyball together on the school team. You know, they're, they're tight. And Coach McCullough said they do everything together. It's not just, hey, we're on teams together. They do everything outside of school together. They hang out together. And when you get a group of guys that are that close uh, you can really do some special things, and credit to Coach McCullough. I think this is his best coaching job yeah. that he's done in the years that we've covered him, Joe, and they are back to the state tournament. Yeah, you, do you want to talk to Coach after this one? Or? Uh, is he coming out? I don't know, but uh, it seems like when we pack up we, and the coach comes over. I shut it off literally seconds yeah. before he came up yeah. uh, against Northern well, Cambria. We'll, uh, we'll probably have a chance. Well, this might not be this might be our last chance to talk to Coach. We plan on doing this state, uh, state game, but... Uh, we're we're obviously going to be. No, uh, we're good. I'm going to be yeah. uh, in a, uh, another state, and we, we're not, uh, yeah. Josh might be there with me. Actually, uh, we'll see. Get some golf in, warm weather. But uh, well, fingers crossed, we'll be able to do that game. But yeah, we'll wait for Judd. He'll be out here shortly, I believe. But uh, we'll some, give some more information. I think I found here. I th the Wolves won't know their opponent uh, until tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening, as it is Iroquois, I believe, and. Um, Gerard, um, if I'm not mistaken here, uh, who will face off in the District 10 championship game. The Wolves will draw the number two team. Right. So the runner-up in that matchup. And uh, so. I do see Coach McCullough out there. He's uh, shaking hands, kissing babies. Yeah, talk, well, he's talking to Coach Mike Harris right now, the opposing coach uh, at Claysburg Kimmel. They're talking a little bit about the game. I'm sure that both of those guys, you know, in the heat of the moment, they're not giving an inch, but. You know, after the game, they're, they're talking, hey, it got a little too physical out there. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know how coaches are after the game. Yeah. Um, of course, Coach McCullough, you, know, you, can, you can speak to his character. He is a fiery dude when the, when the game is on. But off the court, one of the nicest men you'll ever meet. Hold on one second here, Josh.
long hair reporter. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Coach uh, talking to some long haired reporter. Josh giving you the play by play of post game here. Uh, very you. sarcastically yeah. uh, at, the, at the moment. Uh, but uh, we're going to try to get right. Coach Judd McCall up here just in case. Uh, I guess I'm a long haired reporter too. You are, yeah. Josh with a, just uh, needing a haircut desperately. <laughs> mother, Crying out mother for mother would agree. Deb, I hope you're watching. She knows. Oh, uh, you know, she, I feel like she might attack me in my sleep with scissors. Is that all charged up? No. Maybe that no, but it, it should last. Here, let me see it there, Josh. It might be right. an issue because it did shut off there at the end on you. But, uh, but uh, yeah, it uh, should be fun to see what the Wolves are able to do there. In that, uh, and anything can happen, really. I mean, look at what the Armstrong girls. And uh, good luck and congratulations to Armstrong girls, uh, head coach Jim Caliper, and uh, reaching the – uh, Whippy Old Finals, they'll play in that tomorrow at the Peterson Event Center. Just an excellent job. And we talked about teams that we didn't necessarily expect to be doing what they're doing at this uh, stage of the season. And Armstrong girls, and that's really nothing against them. Uh, Emma Paul, one of the best female athletes uh, that we've had a chance to cover, and honored to cover. Uh, at the beginning of the season, I didn't necessarily see a Whippy Old Championship game in their future. And here they are tomorrow with a chance to uh, just, you know, win one against South Fayette. And... Uh, Judd uh, coming out here. Josh, he's down there. If you want to grab him, make sure, because he was thinking about coming up here, it looks like. But let's wrap that up. Good luck to uh, Jim Caliper and the, uh, um, and the uh, West Shim or Armstrong girls. Go ahead down there, Josh. Give that to Frank, please. Yep, I will. But, uh, yeah, good luck to them uh, tomorrow in the uh, Whippy Old 5A championship game and uh, on uh, or the Peterson Event Center. Big game there and to decide the winner for Class 5A before they enter the uh, state playoffs. So we're going to uh, send it down to Josh and Coach. Uh, if if I can get this button to turn on. We'll see here one second. Okay, Josh, can you give me a test? Can you test it? Coach McCullough? Yep, I hear you. All right, go, have at it. All right, Josh Rangos here, Coach McCullough, a victory here in the Constellation game, District 6, Class 2A Constellation game. You guys finished third in the district this year. First off, I want you to tell me about this team a little bit. As I said at the end of the broadcast, I didn't see it, but credit to you. You saw it, you believed, and these guys achieved. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I give a lot of credit, first and foremost, to Ezra Ostro. He's, he's a leader in the clubhouse. Uh, he's the only senior that's been a lonely place, and I can't uh, ask for anything more than from him. Uh, as a leader, as a glue guy, as a, as a kid that knows his role and plays his role outstandingly. So I'm really proud of Ezra. You know, you guys shot the ball really, really well tonight. And I said, it's kind of like hitting in baseball. Hitting is contagious. Shooting is contagious. These guys got hot. You knock a couple down early. It starts to roll, and it kind of snowballs. You guys shot really well from outside. Yeah, I mean, throughout the season, early on especially, we had a couple uh, some pretty ugly shooting nights. But we knew from the stats we could see in practice and just you could see it in, in Alex and, and Bra Braden and, and Travis, they were due uh, to, to start to get hot. And uh, we got hot at the right time of the year. You know, Montauk was a heck of a game, even Marion Center, and obviously tonight uh, we finally got hot. Coach, I'm not trying to dwell on any negatives. It's a positive night tonight, but you guys struggled with the press tonight. I thought you did a great job against Northern Cambria. Tonight, not so great. Uh, that's something you guys are going to have to work on before state. Yeah, absolutely, especially I think Iroquois is very fast, and we better, we better shore it up for sure. Uh, and, and, and learn how to get in better spots and, and, and handle it with more poise than we did tonight. Coach McCullough, back to the state championship tournament for the second time in three years. Just talk about what that means to this program. Oh, it's, it's, it's great. Now, we've had so many just uh, storied teams and great, uh, uh, you know, the program under Coach Nagy and now under myself, we just, we've been, we've been blessed with a lot of talent. And this is for all the kids, you know, especially the ones that were, uh, in the Whitfield for so many years and didn't have the, the easier pathway in District 6. It's not easy, but it's easier. And so uh, we, we carry the, their, their teams into this with uh, that, them in our uh, uh, heart and mind, and, and we're doing it for them. Well, congratulations to you, Coach McCullough, and the Wolves. Tonight, victorious in the third place consolation game. We'll see you at the state tournament. All right, thanks, Josh. So thank you to Coach McCullough again. Uh, Wolves will make a second appearance in the PIAA playoffs in the last three seasons, so Coach McCullough able to really pull all the strings and make things work here in Rural Valley for these Wolves, uh, certainly. Been fun to watch these last couple years, and the ride's not over yet. Um, I met, heard Coach mention Iroquois, Josh. Not sure if it's been decided. Maybe uh, I can't read. There's a really good chance that's the case. 
Um, I don't know. I, he mentioned them, yeah, uh, but I think he might have just mentioned them as one of the two possibilities. Okay, maybe that's a maybe that to, to lead us to believe that Gerard's a kind of a powerhouse here, but, uh, but uh, we shall see. Mm, I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, he just said that they don't know yet. Oh, okay, but uh, so I can read. That's good to know, because I. I question my own reading abilities well and sometimes hey i question really all the things that you should be able to do at by your 30s i question all of my abilities actually yeah but uh i think it's gonna wrap it up we gonna want to get out of the way here for the folks to clean up so uh, thank you to our sponsors josh please john f craft insurance agency our official broadcast partner tonight carson boyer funeral home and monuments ryan bowser state farm phoenix physical therapy rural valley schultz roofing incorporated steffi's country catering and phoenix physical therapy rural valley did i say them twice yeah that's okay hey the, the pt plays so nice you named it twice they are so. also, oh beanie powder solutions oh, sorry yeah, about thank that thank you to jason elkin beanie powder solutions they'll be putting uh, some spray foam insulation on our new build here shortly, so if we believe in them, so should you. So thank you to B and E Powder Solutions uh, for their support. Uh, so thank you, Josh. Yeah, Appreciate man. You, man. Great doing a game with you. We don't awesome. Get to, don't get to do them too often, so thank you uh, for all of you do and uh, helping make this broadcast awesome. And lastly, want to thank you folks out there. You guys are awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's a Thursday night. You could be doing a lot of things, and you spend it with us, and we certainly appreciate you for it. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, you know, for your support, not just tonight, but through all season long and all year long here on iTop Sports Network. So for Josh Schreckengoss, my name is Joe Rhodes. You guys have a great, great, great rest of your week, and may no train pass you by. We'll see you.